Hi everyone, welcome to Crochet Tutorials. In this video, we're going to have a look at how to make these astonishingly beautiful mitered granny squares. Um, some people call this the boxing granny square um, or the offset granny square. Um, mitre essentially means corner. So you can see that the granny square itself starts right in the corner rather than in the middle with a traditional granny square. So for this uh, particular pattern, it is best if you change colour every couple of rounds. Um, and in this uh, particular square, I've made eight rounds with a ninth round of a border. I've used a worsted weight yarn or a, a 10 ply yarn essentially. The yarn that I've used for these is this Red Heart with Love yarn. Um, this particular one is the Blue Hawaii and it's a stunning blue. Um, and of course the other colours are all the same yarn, just the pink and the yellow and the orange. And this lovely sort of natural colour um, around the outside is called eggshell. Um, so I've used a five and a half millimetre hook to make these. Of course, you can make them in whatever yarn you like. Um, this, this one here is one I made in just eight ply yarn. So just a, a normal DK. Um, you can see that it is significantly smaller um, than the worsted weight yarn, but it looks fantastic nevertheless. And, you know, obviously your clusters are a lot smaller. I've used a smaller hook. I've used a three and a half millimeter hook for this square. And it looks absolutely fine. It just is, for me, um, a, a much smaller square. And, you know, when you're making, I don't know, 80 squares, um, you'd probably need to make a hundred of these to make the blanket the same size. So yes, yeah, certainly this is the eight ply size. It is really still fantastic, but I prefer to use a worsted weight yarn. Um, and generally the worsted weight yarns, you know, you end up with, I guess, a warmer product as well because you've got a thicker yarn. So the only thing that I will say about this is it might look a little bit intimidating. If you have done a granny square before, then it is no worries. I am going to assume that you do know the basics of crochet. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining how to make a double crochet or a treble crochet if you're from the UK. Um, I'm going to assume that you actually do know that um, and then we'll just look at how the pattern works up. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so where we start, as I said earlier, is this part here. And essentially, though, we're going to crochet everything up to and not including the border. Um, the border goes on last, obviously, and you can actually use that uh, or work your border as a join as you go if you decide to later. But I like the way the border looks when it's put on the square. Um, so we're going to start with this these two rounds here, and it is exactly the way you would make a granny square. So you're going to need a slip knot on your hook, um, and then you can chain three if you prefer a smaller hole in the middle, but I tend to chain four, just chain four, and then make a circle by inserting your hook into that first chain you made, and just making a slip stitch. Then you've got your circle here, or I guess your hole here in the middle of your circle that you need to put your stitches into. But first we need to chain three to get up to the height of that double crochet or a treble crochet if you are in the UK. And then we need to yarn over and into the hole, pull up a loop, and yarn over, pull through two, 
yarn over and pull through to to make that double crochet stitch or treble if you're in the UK and we need three in each cluster and we're going to do four clusters as a normal granny square has the four clusters of three stitches and they are separated by a chain two so that's our three because our chain three counts as a double crochet so then we're going to chain two and put in three more double crochets and again chain two it helps if you kind of turn your um, circle so you're not trying to work right next to that cluster you've just put in so turn it so you put your cluster in the next sort of space in the circle two and three and then chain two and just scooch that over and put in your final cluster one two and three and then chain two at the end so you join to the third chain in your chain up three from the beginning so just join to the top of that with a slip stitch so when we finish this, then we are actually in almost this corner here. You could slip stitch across to get into this corner. But what I tend to do is just turn the square and then slip stitch into that corner that we just made when we finished and then start working into the corner. It doesn't matter that this is the wrong side. There really is no right or wrong side to this because you do turn every row anyway. So we need to chain up three to get our first double crochet or treble crochet if you're in the UK. Yarn over and put in two more. And this is how we make every corner in the granny square with three stitches, a chain two, and three more stitches in that same space. With granny squares, we work into the spaces rather than into the actual stitches the way you might with other designs. So here we're going to start chaining one between clusters and between corners. So because we're hovering over this particular um, cluster here from the previous round, we chain one and then make another corner. two and three, a chain two, and three more double crochets or treble crochets if you're in the UK. So again, because we're on the side, chain one and pop in your next corner. chain two in the corner and put in your three clusters to complete the corner three clusters rather three stitches to complete the corner chain one because we're on the side and put in our final corner three double crochets or treble crochets if you're in the UK a chain two and three more and three don't forget to chain one for the side and then again just into the top of that chain three that we did initially and slip stitch to join and that is round one and two so we just need to tie off that color because we're finished with that color for now
and you should have a square that looks like this with four parts in the middle and then each of those corners create a corner of their own for the basis of the square. Okay, so my next color is the yellow here. So I've got my yellow and anyone who has seen my videos before knows that I always join my new color with a slip knot on my hook and with a slip stitch into the space where I'm joining. That is my personal preference for security. Um, you may think that that is unnecessary and you can join however you like. With this square though, what we're going to do is join in a corner. So at this round, you are free to select any corner. So I'm just going to select this one and that becomes my joining space. And what we're going to do is chain up three. We're not going to make a corner in this because it's a mitered square. So at the moment, we're making this cluster here. This is where we've joined and we're making this cluster. And so we only need one. This one will come in in our final round, of course. But for this, we only need this one cluster here. So pop in the other two stitches, the double crochet stitches for that cluster. And then chain one for the side. And then we're going to work into this space. Three double crochet. And three. And chain one and then work a corner in this corner here. Which is three double crochet, a chain two, and three double crochet. And then chain one, and work a cluster into this space. and three, chain one. And finally, we're going to work one cluster into this space. And that is this one here. And because we're on the mitre, we don't go all the way around this one. We're just working one cluster into that space. So that is just three double crochet. And then we need to get to the second round. So every color has two rounds. And what we're gonna do is chain up to get to this height here for this round. So we're gonna actually chain four. One, two, three, four. You can chain three if you prefer. Um, essentially though, I'm chaining four to be a the height of a double crochet and a chain one for the chain one space. And then we're going to turn and we're going to work a cluster into that next stitch or into that next space rather. So don't worry that this looks a bit weird. It's going to form the edge where we'll put the the cluster for our border later. So you put in your three double crochet, chain one, and just move into the next space and put in your three double crochet. And then chain one again and work your corner. Three double crochet. chain two and three more double crochet. A chain one for the side and pop in a cluster 
in that space. A chain one and a final cluster in this last space here. So just like we did over here, we need to make a side. And all we're going to do is chain one after that cluster and then double crochet into the top of this chain three that we did right at the beginning of the previous round when we started this color. So just chaining, oh, sorry, doing a double crochet into that. And then that is the end of our round in this color. So we're going to tie off this color and have a look at the front. And you can see that it makes a nice square. These edges are nice and straight and that's exactly what we want. So we're going to bring in the next color which for me is this blue. So the process is exactly the same now. Essentially we join on this color and we join it in the same corner, or not the same corner, but in on the same side as where we previously joined. So we joined our yellow on here, so we're going to join our blue onto that space there and try and get it so your join is actually on the top of that and not on the side here and then again we're going to chain three and we're going to pop two more double crochets into that space and you'll see that the pattern emerge. When we join on a color, we'll put in a cluster. But when we finish, we finish with just that double crochet into the chain three from the beginning. And that will be the same with all of our rounds for the next couple of colors. So after you've popped in the cluster, chain one and put in your cluster here. chain one, another cluster, chain one and a corner and the corner is three, double crochet, a chain two and three double crochet. chain one and put in the cluster chain one and another cluster chain one and we're going to put in our final cluster in here because when we chained this up, we chained four to be a double crochet and a chain one space. So there is a chain one space right here that we need to put a cluster in. And three. And then once again, we're going to do the same as we did in our first round of the yellow. We're going to chain four and turn. And then just put our clusters in as normal. I don't know if you can hear my wind chime in the back there. Um, and then another cluster, always separated by a chain one, unless we're in the corner, and then we are uh, separating with a chain two. Chain one, 
chain one and corner. Chain two for our corner. And complete the corner. Chain one. And do our clusters along the side. Chain one. My yarn ball's actually leaped out of my bowl and it's rolling along the floor at the moment, which is just hilarious. Thank you, yarn ball. Um, and our final cluster goes into this space here. And then as we did with the end of the yellow, we're going to chain one and do a double crochet into the top of that chain three that we did at the beginning of this color. And once again, that is the end of that color. So we just need to tie it off. I leave some decent tails for weaving in my ends. And then we need to bring in the next color, which for me is the pink. This is just a gorgeous pink. It's so vibrant. Um, and this is why the ball has leapt out of the bowl, by the way. It's massive. So, All right. And the same thing again. We're going to join in this top right corner with a slip knot on the hook. Join whatever way you think is most effective for you, though. Just try and join onto the top, which can be a little bit tricky uh, because, you know, it's automatic to sort of join on the side. But just try and join onto the top so you're not having to come around that, that knot there that you've put in from the previous colour. All right, and again, chain three. And because we're just starting the colour, we're doing a cluster in here. chain one and put in the clusters in the spaces all the way along. Chain one between the clusters on the sides. Two and three. Chain one and work the corner. Chain two in between your clusters in the corner. Never forget that. I don't think it would really matter if you only put in a chain one, but certainly we like the consistency. And then work the clusters down this side. Chaining one between them. Two and three, chain one, one, two, and three, chain one, and again in this little weird space that we made here, we're popping in a cluster at the end, as we did with the I got completely lost then. As we did with the blue, we're popping in a cluster 
with the pink. And then that will require us to chain four to get up to the next row, turn and put our clusters in along the side. Two and three, chain one, one, two, three, chain one, and chain one. And then we're at our corner and we need to pop in three double crochets. Three, a chain two and three more double crochets. Then chain one, because we're on the side one, two, and three. And it really is as simple as that. And then when we get to the end, of course, this is our second row of this color, and it is our last color before the border. Of course, you could make, you could put in another color if you like. Um, but I do think that this amount of rounds is just perfect for this mitered style. And this is a great pattern actually for boys um, or for the men in your life. It's kind of um, more appealing to them generally than the normal granny square. So now at the end here, we chain one and then we're going to double crochet into the top of that chain three that we made when we started this color. And that is our square. And it looks a bit weird now because of course all the tails are over here um, and it's a little bit out of shape, um, but it will be fine once we border it. So just tie off this color And then our border color. Now, as I mentioned, I'm using this eggshell color. Um, I just really like the way it goes with the rest of the colors in the project. And realistically for this, you can pretty much join in any corner, but I'm just sticking with my top right where I've joined everyone else and slip knot on my hook and coming in again and joining on the top of that space just with a slip stitch. So we're going to do here is pretty much the same as what we've been doing with all the other colors. A chain up three and then put in the other two double crochets to make a cluster. And then we're just going to move on to the next cluster here. And the reason being is because when we come back to join along this edge, when we come back along this edge and finish, what we're going to actually do is join with the chain two, the, the cluster and then the chain two here. And it looks a lot neater. Um, so you can put your actual corner in there if you like. Um, but I like it this method because it looks neat. Chain one for the side and popping in those clusters. And this is all pretty logical and rudimentary um, and normal um, this round. So essentially this is like 
a normal granny square round. Chaining one between the clusters. And working the corners. A chain two and completing the corner. A chain one and working the side clusters. It only becomes maybe a little bit challenging when you get down to these sides that have been worked differently to the rest. So we'll have a look at that in just a second. Chain one. two and three and now we're here and we're going to chain one and then pop in an actual corner here in this space now with every, every other time we've reached this weird space we've just popped in one cluster but because we're going around a corner now we need to work an actual corner And chain one and then we're working into these chains that we made up when we went to the next level of our colors and just treating them as a chain one space chaining one and straight into the next chain one and just into the next space so essentially wherever you see a space on this outside round pop a cluster in it unless you're at a corner in which case you need to make a corner and three chain one and we're in the corner so we're going to make a corner three double crochet chain two and three more double crochet chain one and this edge is the same as the other edge we just made so the any space you see gets a cluster chain one and three chain one two and three chain one three chain one and then we're back in this corner here and essentially all we need to do is come in and do our other side of our corner in this space chain two and join to the third chain in our initial chain three and 
something I like to always do is just pop it down before I cut off and just make sure that everything's right. Yes, I've got all my corners right. All the clusters have got three stitches in them and everything looks fine. So then it is just a case of tying off. Okay, so the last thing we need to do, um, you may have seen one of my videos before, and I actually don't consider a square completed until ends are sewn in. Um, and all these ends, except for these two, are on this edge here. So I won't make you watch me sew in all my ends, but you may like to far to know a, a really secure way of tying these ends away. Essentially, I just, I do leave quite a long tail. And I guess the reason is because you need to be able to, um, it needs to be at least as long as your darning needle, because you have to be able to sew with it. So what I do is this particular tail, you can see it comes out from this stitch here. And so I tend to just go in, not under the piece of yarn where it comes out, but under the piece of yarn just behind that, and then just go under a few of the strands and pull that yarn through. And then the same thing, I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna go back in, but I'm not gonna go back where I just came out. I'm gonna go just in front of that and come out just in front of where I went in. So it catches that piece of yarn. And then I'm going to go again in and come out a bit beyond where I went out before. And if you do that one, two, three times, you can cut it off and it will remain held solid. So when you're at the top of a stitch like this, because obviously I was at the base there, and you know, sometimes you'll be at the base, sometimes you'll be at the top. Um, so when you're at the top of a stitch like that, what I tend to do is just go down. So just go straight into the stitch and just grab a couple of those and then come out at the base of the stitch. And, and then you can do exactly the same thing. So I'm not gonna go in where I just came out. I'm gonna go above that and just behind it and scooch under a few of those stitches there. And then again, I'm not going to go in where I came out. I'm just going to go in behind it and back that way. And then I can just, oh, I've almost got not enough room on my thread. And then I can just come in and pass that back across and cut it off. And that will hold nicely. So when you've got, uh, for example, this one that's sitting, it's a yellow, but it's underneath some of the, the eggshell color and it's right next to the blue and it kind of doesn't even look as though it's anywhere near the yellow. What I tend to do for that is just, just like I did with the, uh, the yarn at the top of the stitch, all I'm going to do is just pass it under here. So I'm going to pass it under that eggshell color and, and then down into that stitch. So I'm weaving in the yellow in the yellow. Look, you can weave it in under here, but of course, because you'd be going over these yarn strands it would show up and as I said earlier these 
squares don't have a front or a back they look the same but if I wove those ends across those strands there would definitely be an obvious back and you know given that it's a blanket if it were a bag that might be okay um, because you know you'd have an inside and an outside of the bag but given that this is for a blanket I definitely don't want an obvious front and back. So what I've just done is gone down here. So that's essentially one pass. Going under these strands is two. And then going under here, and I'm going to come back out in that stitch. Just so it's a little bit more secure. And then cut it off. So you will find that that, of course, is the case with a number of your tails. So all you need to do is pass that colour down behind these and then get down to the bottom of these stitches. Or you could come across this way and down and into the bottom of the stitches. But I tend to like to work my colours in under the stitches of the same colour. So I'm going to complete this um, tying in of these ends. It isn't our most fun job in crochet, but certainly once they're tied in and all you've got is a square um, and they're all ready for joining, it is a really nice feeling. So I do hope you use the mitered square, um, remembering that you can do it in um, eight ply if you like, or you can do it in any kind of yarn. I hope you use it and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please do so uh, because I regularly upload with lots of tutorial videos for your pleasure. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them in the comments. Otherwise good luck with your mitered square. I hope you enjoy them and I shall see you in the next video.